Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. On today's broadcast, Andrew will be sharing about the importance of having a biblical worldview. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm halfway through my series. This will be the beginning of my third week teaching on a biblical worldview. We've got a package here that includes this workbook that has everything that I've been teaching printed out. And this teaching on biblical worldview is different than some of the teaching that I do in the sense that I'm bringing in quotes from people. I'm using statistics. We've been quoting scientists as we've been comparing creationism versus evolution. And I tell you, there's a lot of Christians that feel like, well, I don't have to believe in, in creationism. You know, science has proven that we evolved over a millions and millions of years. That is absolutely incorrect, even from a scientific standpoint. But if you believe that, it undercuts the authority of the Word of God. I started teaching on that last week. Today, I'm going to be continuing that. This is a brand new video series that we have out entitled Biblical Worldview. So watch this. I'll come back at the end of today's program. You'll often hear scientists say things like, you're blinded by faith and you're ignoring science. I believe it's science, not true science, but pseudoscience that is blinded by faith. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in a God who created all of these things. They have a predisposition against God, and I believe it is demonically motivated. Satan is behind it, whether they know it or not. Satan is the one who has given them such a desire to disbelieve the witness of creation and all of these things. They want to believe. It is a religion. They have chosen to believe against the facts. Did you know that evolution is constantly having to change its quote-unquote facts? In the Scopes trial back in 1925, and this is where they sued a school system because they tried to limit a teacher who was teaching evolutionary theory, so they brought it to court. And during the trial, they came out and preached evolution and used a tooth. And I've actually held a tooth that was from that same excavation. It's not the one that was famous in the trial, but I, at Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, they have a tooth from that same thing. It turned out to be the tooth of a modern-day pig, but during the Scopes trial, it was said that it was a tooth from an ancient man, and it proved evolution. It was proven to be the tooth of a pig. It did not prove anything, and yet evolution was allowed into our school system on faulty information that they said at one time was science, and it wasn't. The Piltdown Man was discovered in 1912 in Sussex, England, and it was discovered by an amateur archaeologist, Charles Dawson, and the majority of the scientific community called this Piltdown Man as the missing evolutionary link between ape and man. And the remains of this skull were claimed to be over a million years old. But in 1953, at an International Congress of Paleontologists, the Piltdown Man was first openly called a fraud and so intensive study came, and they found that the remains were those of a modern man's cranium, no more than 600 years old. And yet, for generations, this was chosen as a proof of evolution. They constantly are having to change their facts because it is not fact. It is theory, and they're grasping at straws. There has never been a link found that shows man developing from ape to human. You will often hear people cite that, but it's not true. There is no such thing. And they will often use things that are observable today, and they will talk about, like, for instance, bacteria mutates into different strands. You can tr treat some types of bacteria with certain medication, and the strands will mutate and develop into a disease-resistant thing. And say, they say, see, that's evolution. Well, there is no doubt that there are changes within a species, but there is not one single example ever 
OF ONE SPECIES BECOMING ANOTHER SPECIES, AND YET THAT IS WHAT EVOLUTION IS DEPENDENT UPON. THEY WILL CITE THINGS LIKE PEOPLE AT REAL HIGH ELEVATIONS, THEIR BODY CHEMISTRY CHANGES, THEIR lungs, LUNGS EXPAND, THEIR BODY PRODUCES MORE RED BLOOD CELLS TO CARRY OXYGEN. BUT AGAIN, THAT IS AN ADAPTATION. IT IS NOT A TRANSFORMATION FROM ONE SPECIES TO ANOTHER. THAT HAS NEVER HAPPENED. AS A MATTER OF FACT, IN THE BOOK OF GENESIS, GENESIS 1, IT SAYS FOUR DIFFERENT TIMES GOD GAVE THE ANIMALS AND THE SEA CREATURES THE ABILITY TO PRODUCE AFTER THEIR KIND. YOU CAN TAKE COWS AND YOU CAN BREED CERTAIN COWS. YOU CAN TAKE HORSES AND YOU CAN BREED, YOU KNOW, BIG WORK HORSES DOWN TO MINIATURE HORSES, BUT THEY'RE STILL ALL HORSES. YOU CAN'T MAKE A FISH OUT OF A HORSE. YOU CAN'T MAKE A DOG OUT OF A WHALE. YOU CAN'T CHANGE SPECIES. THERE IS NO OBSERVATION OF THIS. SOMETIMES THEY'LL CITE THINGS LIKE A MOTH CHANGES AND IT CHANGES COLORS. WELL, THAT'S JUST AN ADAPTATION WITHIN A SPECIES. IT IS NOT CHANGING FROM ONE SPECIES TO ANOTHER. I'VE EVEN HEARD SOME EVOLUTIONISTS TRY AND SAY THAT WHEN A CATERPILLAR SPINS A COCOON AND THEN COMES OUT A BUTTERFLY, THAT'S AN EVIDENCE OF EVOLUTION. NO, IT'S NOT. MATTER OF FACT, THAT ACTUALLY DISPROVES EVOLUTION BECAUSE THIS TRANSFORMATION HAPPENS RAPIDLY WITHIN JUST A MATTER OF WEEKS, WHEREAS EVOLUTION IS DEPENDENT UPON A CYCLE OF DEATH AND REBIRTH OVER MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF YEARS. IT ACTUALLY GOES COMPLETELY AGAINST EVERYTHING THEY'RE SAYING. THEN YOU CAN TAKE A SCIENTIFIC PRINCIPLE LIKE THE SECOND LAW OF THERMODYNAMICS, AND THIS LAW SAYS THAT EVERYTHING IN THE UNIVERSE GOES FROM A STATE OF ORDER TO DISORDER, FROM COMPLEX TO LESS COMPLEX. FOR INSTANCE, YOU KNOW, IF I HAD FLOWERS HERE ON A DESK, YOU COULD LEAVE THOSE FLOWERS THERE FOR WEEKS, MONTHS, YEARS, MILLENNIA, AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THOSE FLOWERS WILL NEVER GET INTO A VASE AND ORGANIZE THEMSELVES INTO A BEAUTIFUL ARRANGEMENT. IT GOES FROM ORDER TO DISORDER, NOT FROM CHAOS TO ORDER. YOU CAN'T OBSERVE THAT. IF YOU TAKE SOMETHING THAT, YOU KNOW, PEOPLE BUILD, YOU COULD TAKE A CAR OR SOMETHING, AND YOU COULD PUT ALL OF THOSE CAR PARTS OUT THERE IN THE FIRST PLACE. THAT'S NOT EVEN A GREAT COMPARISON BECAUSE WHERE DID THE PARTS COME FROM IN THE FIRST PLACE? THEY WOULD HAVE TO BE PRODUCED BY MAN. THEY WOULD HAVE TO BE ENGINEERED AND FITTED TOGETHER AND DESIGNED TO PRODUCE SOMETHING. BUT YOU COULD TAKE ALL OF THE PARTS OF A CAR AND YOU COULD PUT THEM IN A ROOM, AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THEY WILL NEVER JUST ASSEMBLE THEMSELVES AND COME INTO ORDER. I'VE HEARD EVOLUTION COMPARED TO LIKE A BOMB GOING OFF IN A PLANT THAT BUILDS 747 JETS. AND IF YOU HAD ALL OF THE PARTS, WHICH FIRST OF ALL, AGAIN, IS NOT A GREAT COMPARISON BECAUSE WHERE DID THE PARTS COME FROM? PEOPLE WHO BELIEVE THAT THERE WAS JUST A BIG BANG AND ALL OF THIS STUFF HAPPENED, WELL, WHERE DID THE MATERIAL COME FROM THAT THE BIG BANG CAME FROM? MAN, IT JUST DOESN'T WORK. I HEARD A STORY ONE TIME ABOUT SOMEBODY, YOU KNOW, CHALLENGING GOD AND SAYS, I CAN CREATE THINGS. AND GOD SAID, OH, YEAH? AND HE SAID, YEAH, I'LL PROVE IT TO YOU. HE SAYS, YOU GIVE ME THIS BIT OF EARTH OVER HERE AND I'LL CREATE LIFE AND YOU TAKE THIS BIT OF EARTH AND I'LL SHOW YOU THAT I CAN DO WHAT YOU DO. AND SO GOD SAYS, ALL RIGHT, GIVE ME BACK ALL OF THE DIRT. AND HE SAYS, WELL, I GOT TO HAVE THE DIRT TO DO THIS. AND HE SAYS, YOU COME UP WITH YOUR OWN DIRT. YOU KNOW, EVEN IF YOU COULD BELIEVE THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER LIGHTNING STRUCK A PRIMORDIAL SOUP AND LIFE CAME OUT OF IT, WHERE DID THIS LIGHTNING COME FROM? WHERE DID THE PRIMORDIAL SOUP COME FROM? HOW DOES ALL OF THIS STUFF HAPPEN? IT JUST DOES NOT MAKE SENSE. THINGS DON'T GO FROM DISORDER TO ORDER. EVERYTHING IN LIFE THAT YOU SEE GOES FROM ORDER TO CHAOS. IT DOESN'T IMPROVE, IT DIMINISHES. IF YOU GO TO ANY SPECIES OF ANIMAL, PEOPLE, ANYTHING, MUTATIONS ARE NEVER AN IMPROVEMENT. THEY ARE ALWAYS DETRIMENTAL, AND THEY TEND TO DIE OUT. AND YET, EVOLUTION IS DEPENDENT UPON VERY SIMPLE THINGS, HAVING A MUTATION THAT WAS AN IMPROVEMENT, AND SO THEREFORE IT REPRODUCES ITSELF AND IT JUST CONTINUES TIME AFTER TIME AFTER TIME, THOUSANDS AND THOUSANDS OF TIMES, AND IMPROVES AND GETS BETTER AND BETTER AND BETTER. EVEN IF YOU COULD SEE THINGS GO FROM DISORDER TO ORDER ONE TIME, THE CHANCES OF IT HAPPENING AGAIN ARE INFINITESIMAL. IT JUST WOULDN'T HAPPEN. I TELL YOU, IT DOES NOT MAKE SENSE. PEOPLE SAY, WELL, WELL, LOOK AT THE GEOLOGIC COLUMN. THIS IS PROOF THAT ALL OF THESE LAYERS, THE PRECAMBRIAN LAYER AND ALL OF THESE THINGS, MILLIONS UPON MILLIONS OF YEARS IT TOOK TO FORM ALL OF THESE THINGS. THERE'S PROOF. THAT IS NOT PROOF. IT CAN ALL BE EXPLAINED BY NOAH'S FLOOD. MATTER OF FACT, 
THERE ARE A NUMBER OF THINGS THAT I'VE READ ON THIS. FOR INSTANCE, THE GRAND CANYON. I'VE BEEN THROUGH THE GRAND CANYON MANY TIMES, AND THEY WILL SHOW YOU ALL OF THE DIFFERENT LAYERS, AND THAT THEY WILL SAY THAT IT TOOK MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF YEARS FOR THESE LAYERS TO BE LAID DOWN, AND THEN IT TOOK MILLIONS OF YEARS FOR THE WATER TO ERODE IT. WELL, FIRST OF ALL, OUT WHERE I LIVE, WE HAVE ROCK AND GRANITE EVERYWHERE. AND DURING A FLOOD ONE TIME, I SAW A ROAD THAT WAS WASHED OUT, AND THE HILL THAT WAS BEHIND IT, IT WAS A 20-FOOT GULLY THAT WAS WASHED THROUGH GRANITE IN ONE NIGHT. AND I'VE SEEN THAT WITH my, MY OWN EYES. AND I'VE HAD IT EXPLAINED TO ME THAT AFTER NOAH'S FLOOD, AS THE WATERS WERE RECEDING, THAT THERE WAS A HUGE NATURAL DAM THAT WAS BUILT UP TO THE NORTH AND EAST OF THE GRAND CANYON. IT COVERED ARIZONA, uh, COLORADO, UTAH. IT WAS A HUGE, MASSIVE AMOUNT OF WATER. AND ANYWAY, AS THE WATERS RECEDED, ALL OF THESE DEPOSITS THAT WERE LAID DOWN WERE RELATIVELY WEAK AND SOFT, AND EVENTUALLY THAT DAM BROKE. AND WHEN IT DID, THIS HUGE AMOUNT OF WATER THAT COVERED ALL OF THESE STATES CAME RUSHING THROUGH THE GRAND CANYON AND, and DISSOLVED THOSE RELATIVELY SOFT AND RECENT LAYERS THAT HAD BEEN LAID DOWN OVER A YEAR'S PERIOD OF TIME DURING NOAH'S FLOOD. DID YOU KNOW THAT NOAH'S FLOOD THERE ARE CULTURES IN EVERY CONTINENT ON THIS PLANET THAT THEY ALL HAVE IN THEIR HISTORY SOME ACKNOWLEDGEMENT OF A WORLDWIDE FLOOD. PEOPLE THAT HAVE NEVER TALKED TO OTHER PEOPLES, IT'S ALL IN THESE THINGS. I'VE ACTUALLY HAD PICTURES SHOWN ME THAT YOU CAN SHOW THE EXACT SAME LAYERS OF SEDIMENT THAT WERE LAID DOWN IN THE UNITED STATES. THE EXACT SAME LAYERS OF SEDIMENT ARE OVER IN EUROPE AND AROUND THE WORLD. IT WAS A WORLDWIDE FLOOD. YOU CAN SEE THIS WHEN MOUNT ST. HELENS ERUPTED, AND THAT WAS IN 1980. AND THERE WERE DEPOSITS THAT WERE LAID DOWN, AND THERE'S 75 FEET OF DEPOSITS THAT WERE LAID DOWN IN JUST A MATTER OF HOURS. AND I'VE ACTUALLY SEEN PICTURES OF THESE DEPOSITS. AND IF AN EVOLUTIONIST WAS TO COME BY WITHOUT KNOWING WHAT HAD HAPPENED, THEY WOULD LOOK AT THESE DIFFERENT LAYERS AND SAID, SEE, THIS TOOK 25 MILLION YEARS, 50 MILLION YEARS TO DO THIS. AND YET THE RECORDS SHOW THAT IT ALL HAPPENED RELATIVELY FAST IN JUST A MATTER OF HOURS. JUST A COUPLE OF DAYS, ALL OF THESE LAYERS WERE PUT DOWN. EVOLUTIONISTS ALSO SAID THAT AFTER MOUNT ST. HELENS, YOU KNOW, THE CATASTROPHE THERE AND THE VOLCANIC ERUPTION AND THE THE LAKES THAT WERE BOILED AND THEY RUSHED DOWN AND IT KILLED ALL OF THIS VEGETATION. THEY SAID IT WOULD TAKE TENS OF THOUSANDS OF YEARS TO RESPOND. AND I'VE SEEN A REPORT THAT IN 20 YEARS THEY SAID IT HAS ALREADY RECOVERED WHAT THE EVOLUTIONISTS THOUGHT WOULD HAVE TAKEN THOUSANDS AND THOUSANDS OF YEARS TO DO. THAT IS JUST NOT ACCURATE. ALL OF THIS EVOLUTION AND ALL OF THE SO-CALLED SCIENCE AND THINGS THAT ARE ASSOCIATED WITH IT ARE BASED ON PRESUPPOSITIONS. THEY BELIEVE IN THE LONG PERIOD OF THE EARTH, AND THEY START FROM THAT POSITION, AND THAT SKEWS ALL OF THEIR REASONING. THAT IS CIRCULAR REASONING. IF THIS IS TRUE, WELL, THEN THIS MUST BE TRUE. BUT THAT FIRST THING, THAT FIRST ASSUMPTION YOU MADE MAY NOT HAVE BEEN TRUE IN THE FIRST PLACE. I HAVE PERSONALLY BEEN TO GLEN ROSE, TEXAS, AND MY FRIEND THERE, DR. CARL BALL, HE HAS THE CREATION EVIDENCE MUSEUM, AND DR. CARL BALL, HE WAS A THEISTIC EVOLUTIONIST. HE WAS A CHRISTIAN, BUT HE BELIEVED THAT GOD CONTROLLED EVOLUTION OVER LONG PERIODS OF TIME, AND HE WAS A PROFESSOR, AND HE LED ONE OF HIS CLASSES TO DO AN EXCAVATION ON THE Paluxy RIVER IN GLEN ROSE, TEXAS. AND WHEN HE WENT THERE, THEY ACTUALLY UNCOVERED DINOSAUR PRINTS THAT HAD A HUMAN FOOTPRINT INSIDE OF THE DINOSAUR PRINT. THEY WERE IMPOSED ON THE SAME PIECE OF CLAY THAT THEY HAD EXCAVATED. AND THIS IS WHAT TURNED HIM TOWARDS BELIEVING THAT THERE WAS A LITERAL CREATION, AND NOW HE HAS THE CREATION RESEARCH MUSEUM. HE ACTUALLY HAD ONE OF THE LEADING AGNOSTICS AND CRITICS OF CREATIONISM THAT CAME AND SAID, IF THESE THINGS ARE TRUE, THIS COMPLETELY DISPELS AND DISPROVES EVOLUTION. BECAUSE ACCORDING TO THE EVOLUTIONARY MODELS, uh, THE SEPARATION BETWEEN MAN AND DINOSAURS WAS MILLIONS OF YEARS. AND THE WAY THEY GET AROUND THIS IS BECAUSE DURING THE GREAT DEPRESSION, THERE WAS A MAN IN TEXAS WHO THESE FOOTPRINTS WERE PRETTY WELL KNOWN. MATTER OF FACT, THERE'S A MAN, BOB SUMMERS, WHO I MEANT, AND HE WAS AN OLDER MAN BACK WHEN I MET HIM, SAY, 10 YEARS OR SO AGO. AND HE ACTUALLY REMEMBERS AS A KID WALKING THROUGH 
the Paluxy River and playing down there, and it was a common thing for them to see human footprints and dinosaur prints in the same strata of rock. And so I, he's an eyewitness account of this. But because it was a common thing there back during the Depression days, there was a man who actually took slabs of these prints and he carved dinosaur and human footprints together trying to make money. People will cite things like that and say, see, that was just all fabricated. But Dr. Carl Ball has continued to do excavation. He has excavated these prints that have human and dinosaur prints in the same place. I've seen them and he had a compression test done on it, which I don't know all of the details. I can't explain it, but it shows that it was not carved, that the material was actually compressed, and they show that it is not fabricated, that the things that he has are not man-made. These things exist, and it completely disproves evolution. And so the radiocarbon dating method, people say, well, what about that? Again, this is one of those examples of circular reasoning. They first of all have a prejudice, a predisposition to believe that certain things happen. And so with those assumptions, then they make these other assumptions and that's how they come up with it. Now, again, I am not a scientist, but I have read these things. I can't do it justice by quoting this, but you could go and find this out on your own that out where I live, we have granite rocks. And did you know in granite, there is radioactive material in there. Matter of fact, we actually have uh, radon poisoning here that you get houses tested for because we have so much granite around here that radon comes up. And some people have believed that this has harmful effects on us. The jury is still out on that. But everybody agrees that there are radioactive materials in granite. And I've had a man tell me that the lifespan of the radioactive material that is in granite is less than one thousandth of a second. The half-life of polonium-214 is 0.000164 seconds. Now, you're a math major. That's quick. That's quick. It's faster than you can snap your finger. Yeah. What that means is that the half-life of these radioactive particles that are in granite, they dissipate in less than one thousandth of a second. If it would have taken millions and millions and millions of years for this granite to form and then harden, well, then all of the radioactivity would have been gone out of it because the radioactivity half-life of that is only less than one thousandth of a second. This shows that it was an instantaneous creation. It did not evolve over a period of time. Did you know all of these things that I'm talking about contradict evolution? It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in a God who created all of these things. And people who are evolutionist, they have to constantly deal with things that don't look like they're right. For instance, if you go back to the geologic column that we were talking about, and they've got about all of these layers, I've actually seen materials that have been found in layers that are supposed to predate human existence by millions of years, and there are artifacts in those hardened rock layers. I've seen a cup that was found, some man-made tools that are found in these layers that are supposed to predate mankind's arrival on the scene by millions of years. And evolutionists just ignore this. I've actually seen a column where there was a tree trunk, a petrified tree trunk that went up through multiple layers that were supposed to be separated by millions of years. There is no way that that could have existed for millions of years, but rather it was a tree trunk and the materials, the layers were laid down one upon another in a relatively short period of time. There's just all of these anomalies that the scientists just kind of discard. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in creation. I tell you, the things that I'm saying here are powerful, and it's not just me. I've given you quote after quote after quote of some of the most renowned scientists, award-winning scientists, showing you that evolution is not a proven fact. And I don't have to be a rocket scientist to believe it. I believe it because the Word of God has told me differently. I tell you, this is important, and this would really, really help you, and it would also empower you 
to be able to minister to other people. So please listen to our announcer and take advantage of this brand new product we've got out. I tell you, this is a game changer. I believe it'll bless you. Today, Andrew's pleased to offer his highly anticipated series, Biblical Worldview, Foundational Truths. In this series, Andrew outlines the importance for every Christian believer to have a biblical worldview. I am really excited about this brand new product that we have entitled Biblical Worldview Foundation Truths. This has been years in the making and it's different than just my typical teaching in the sense that we have graphs, charts, quotes, all kinds of visuals to supplement this. And I tell you, my uh, media department just did a great job. I think that this is one of the most important things I've ever taught. Each of the 12 lessons in this series include a video, audio file, chapter lesson, and printable PDF wrapped in a single box set containing a workbook, audio USB, and a personal access code to the online videos. Each lesson is full of supporting facts, quotes, charts, and historic visuals. Through the online platform, you'll have lifetime access to all of the videos and digital workbooks on your computer or smart device. Biblical Worldview Foundational Truths is available for only $120. Go to awmi.net to order this valuable resource today for you or someone you love. If you haven't yet partnered with us, I'd like to encourage you to pray about it. And then if the Lord says so, join with us because we are taking the gospel not only through television, but we've got over 70 uh, different locations around the world, offices, I think in 16 different nations. Uh, we have uh, probably 8,000 students going through Karis Bible College at any time with over 8,000 graduates. We're pumping out millions and millions of free material through our website, over 200,000 free hours of material on our website. And we're just reaching all around the world. We couldn't do it without partners. And so I would like to ask you to pray about it. If you want to make a difference, I believe that this is a good ministry. You'll get a great return, not only in heaven, but in this life, you'll receive a hundredfold. So join with us and become a partner with Andrew Womack Ministries today. Call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of August, join Andrew in Woodland Park as he hosts our annual Healing is Here conference. In September, Andrew will be in Toronto, Canada hosting a Gospel Truth Seminar. Next, Andrew will be speaking in Granville, Michigan. Also in September, Andrew will be in Woodland Park for the Identity in Christ Conference with guest speaker, Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. Lastly, Andrew will be speaking in Woodbridge, Virginia at the Voice of the Apostles event. And in October, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs. Next, come join Andrew in Woodland Park for our annual Minister's Conference. Then he'll be speaking in Budapest, Hungary for a Grace and Faith Conference. Also in October, Andrew will be hosting the Andrew Womack Ministries European Minister's Conference in Walsall, England. Guest speakers at this event are Paul Milligan, Billy Epperhart, and Bob Yandian. Lastly, Andrew will be hosting a Grace and Faith Conference in Wienendal, Netherlands. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. Karis Bachelor Programs are equipping an army to go into the seven mountains of influence in every society. In our ministry program, students will interact and learn from ministers currently serving in the fivefold ministry. Everybody has a calling. Everybody is separated into something. In our business program, students will learn from experienced professionals on how to implement and run a successful business. 
In our leadership program, students will experience a blend of business and ministry school courses in a flexible night school program. It's an awesome thing to be able to unwrap what God is waiting for us and be able to be truly equipped to be able to go into the world and not only minister, but to be effective. In our global training program, students will learn firsthand from those working in the mission field how to conduct successful and impactful missions work. Additionally, students will receive training in the leadership and business management skills necessary to establish and build a sustainable ministry. In our practical government program, students will be equipped with a solid foundation to effectively impact the arena of government. In our creative arts program, students will develop the skills to succeed in the entertainment industry. In our worship arts program, students will learn how to lead the body of Christ in genuine worship with character and integrity. In our media program, students will develop the skills to effectively communicate and tell stories through multiple mediums. For more information on our bachelor programs, visit KarisBibleCollege.org. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I just want to thank you for being a part of our social media. We are seeing some great things happen. I just wanted to share some of these testimonies with you of things that have happened recently that we got testimonies through the postings that we put on social media. One of them says, I thank God first for allowing me to read on this page, Hallelujah, I was a Muslim, but by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, He called me to become His son, and I am a born-again Christian. Praise the Lord. Man, that right there is awesome. Another testimony says, I was healed tonight while watching Andrew on Healing is Here. I've had chronic back pain, been to many doctors, and have been taking medicine strength Motrin for more than 15 years. I am completely healed and free of pain for the first time. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Andrew, for the healing word. So these are things that are coming out of the social media uh, ministry, and I would like to encourage you to be a part of this. These testimonies could be amplified many times over if we just had more people participating in it. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you and share this uh, ministry with other people. Have you checked out the Inside Story yet? It's a great way for you to get an inside look of what is happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. With over six years of interviews, there's a lot to get excited about. Check out this month's featured story today, only at awmi.net. I want to encourage you to check out a program on Gospel Truth TV with Tony Dungy and James Brown. They're both at the top of their game. Tony is an award-winning, Super Bowl-winning coach. Uh, James Brown is uh, at the top of his game announcing sports things. I mean, they are awesome men. They do an interview on Beyond the Game with JB and Tony is what we've entitled it. And they interview these sports figures and share things with you that usually get cut out on the secular networks. These sports figures are going to share their heart with you about their relationship with the Lord. And I tell you, it'll be a blessing. So check it out, 9.30 a.m., 9.30 p.m., twice a day on Sundays on gospeltruth.tv.